me tell you a story. There was once a man who lived in Africa with his sister. They both lived in a small village on the edge of the forest. Now this man was blind, black blind. He couldn't see a thing. He'd spend most of his days sitting outside his sister, sister's hut on a small stool, talking to people who came by and chatting to them. He became quite well known because people regarded him as quite wise, knowledgeable. And they'd come and ask him things and he would give them his advice. But what I didn't tell you is his sister, quite unbeknownst to him really, was really very attractive and had many suitors. People would come from miles from other villages and ask her for her hand in marriage. And most times she would say, no, 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 go away, go away. And other times she would think about it and still say, no, 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 you're not good enough. Go, 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 go. But one day a man appeared from another village a long way away. He was tall and handsome and he courted her properly. And when he asked her to marry him, she said yes. She said yes. And they had a great wedding. The party raged for three or four days. And during this time, the, wife, the, the blind man approached his sister and said, do I have to leave now? <laughs> and his sister laughed and said, of course not. You must stay and live with me and my new husband. And that's exactly what happened. The blind man lived with them on the edge of the village. The hunter would go out, fetch food, and the blind men would continue to sit and meet people and chat to people and offer advice about things. But one thing niggled with the blind man. Niggled a lot, stayed with him every day. He wanted to go hunting with his new brother-in-law. And most evenings when the hunter came back, he would say to him, please, sir, sir, may I go hunting with you tomorrow? <laughs> and his brother-in-law would laugh and say, you blind man, you are no use to me. Of course you can't go hunting. Ha, forget about it. We'll go about their business. But he didn't stop asking. He asked and asked and asked. And one day the, the hunter brought back a very fine gazelle, huge gazelle. And there was a bit of a feast and there was a bit of drinking went on. And the hunter got quite drunk. And this time when his brother-in-law said, please, 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 can I, please, can I go hunting with you tomorrow? <laughs> the hunter said, okay, of course you can. I'll come with you, come for you tomorrow morning at dawn. Be ready. We'll go hunting for birds. I know a good place. I know a good place, brother. I know a good place. So the next day, as dawn rose, the hunter appeared and took his brother-in-law by the arm and led him out into the forest. He led him down the path, pointing out things they needed to watch for. Step over that log, sir. Mind this stream. Come, come. Duck, duck the low branch. They made their way deeper and deeper, deeper into the woods, just like that. With the blind man being guided by his new brother-in-law. They came to a clearing. And the hunter said, wait here, wait here. I will prepare two cages, two traps rather. We will catch birds that way. He went out, he prepared a small trap. And he put some seed in the bottom of it and he covered it and camouflaged it as best he could. He went across the other side of the clearing and prepared a similar cage, but this time he didn't do anything with it. He threw a few bits of seed in, but he didn't cover it at all. He came back and said, I've prepared two traps, yours is over there. And he pointed, unbeknownst to the blind man, to the small trap which had no camouflage. And mine's on the other side. Mine's on the other side of the clearing. Come. We'll come back tomorrow morning, leading his brother-in-law back to the village. Duck, watch your feet. Careful, careful. They made their way slowly home. The next day, rose again, and the hunter came for his blind brother-in-law and said, Come, brother, we go 
and check our traps. The blind man rose and said, I'll come now, I'll come now. His brother-in-law went to catch the blind man's arm and the blind man said, no, 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 I don't need any help now. And it was true. As he walked, he seemed to have remembered everything on the path. He ducked at the right moment. He stepped over the stream so carefully, over that log. And as they were walking along, the hunter was quite amazed. And then something strange happened. The blind man said, wait, wait. There's an elephant, a bull elephant over on the right. He's just passing, I think, but he may have smelled us. Brother in law, the hunter said, Um, what are you talking about? I can. And to his amazement, he then saw a huge bull elephant making its way down the path, just passing by. How did you know that? How did you know that? I see with my ears, sir. I see with my ears. He made their way further down the path as the elephant passed by. And again, the, the blind man stopped and said, Wait, wait. There's a lion on the rock over there. I think he's asleep. The hunter looked slowly and carefully through the bushes and made his way down the path a bit and saw there was indeed a lion. How did you see, hear, whatever that? I, I use my ears, uh, my senses. Very good. Very good. Come, let's check our traps. He came after a few minutes to the clearing where the two traps had been laid. Both had birds in. And the hunter said to his blind brother-in-law, wait here, wait here. I will clear them. There are birds in them. There are birds in them. He approached, he approached the one which was camouflaged and looked inside where the seed was. There was indeed a bird in there, but it was a very small brown bird. Now, like a little wren, he scooped it out of them, tied its feet together, and went across to the blind man and said, this is the bird in your cage, sir. Take it, put it in your pouch. And the blind man did just that. He put it in his pouch. The hunter went across to the other Age, which was uncamouflaged, and had seen already from the other side of the clearing there was a large bird in it. It was a beautiful bird of paradise with amazing gold and yellow and red feathers and a beautiful head, feathered head piece. It would make some amazing headdresses. He captured it, tied its feet up and put it in his bag and made his way back. I have the other bird, sir. I have the other bird. Let us go home. And again going home, the blind man needed her help as he walked down the path, ducking and wading and stepping over things. There was a convenial atmosphere between them. And as they plodded along, the hunter said to his blind brother-in-law, Sir, sir, they say you are wise. Tell me why there are wars in this world. The blind man smiled and said directly to his hunter brother-in-law, because of what you have just done to me, sir. And the hunter was perplexed and sad and his heart broke and said, I know. And without thinking, he took the huge bird of paradise out of his bag and swapped it with the little bird in the blind man's pouch and said you have the bird that was in your cage now it is yours I have the other one good good they plodded on for a few more minutes uh, sir sir why is there peace in the world brother why is there peace in the world and the blind man said to his brother-in-law because of what you have just done to me. <laughs> and the hunter smiled and said, we will be friends for life. And indeed they were.
That is my story.